This morning, uh, Bert, we found out CFWA would be expanding to Grand Prairie early next year. When you heard the news this morning, what were some of the thoughts going through your mind? I was very pleased. I mean, it's something we've been, as an organization, working towards for the past two or three years, looking at where where we can expand, where we have the most impact on the Indigenous people in that area. Grand Prairie was high on our list. Uh, you know, we've identified other places like uh, Peace River, High Level, uh, Red Deer, uh, Edson. And, you know, these are just some other places where there's a uh, high number of Indigenous people, and those are areas that we'd like to be able to fill in someday. And uh, we applied for Grand Prairie about four, three, four months ago. Um, uh, been in the works for a couple of years, and uh, you know, I was really, really happy. Finally, you know, a uh, huge building block in the growth of our organization. What does the new signal mean for the city of Grand Prairie and its First Nation residents? I think it's an opportunity to build bridges between a lot of the different communities. For us, it's uh, an opportunity to showcase our talent, to show people that we are just as professional and as. Uh, uh, our, our artists are just as uh, awesome as, as any other artist. Uh, and so it's it's a pride thing. It's uh, time to share. It's time to let people know what we're about. I know a lot of my non-Indigenous friends love listening to us. They say we have great music. Uh, you know, they don't mind the... Uh, they don't mind the... Uh, indigenous music. I uh, had some friends a few years ago who were, loved listening to us in St. Paul, and they said, yeah, you know, we love it. You know, and every once in a while, a powwow breaks out. So, you know, they, they like the variety of music that we have. You know, we're obviously very busy right now. We have CJWE coming to Calgary and now the CFWE feed in Grand Prairie. Let's look back 30 years. Of course, we just celebrated our 30th birthday uh, when you formed CFWE and the AMSA brand. Is this a dream come true for you? I guess when we first started, you know, people always said, what was your dream? You know, what, what did you vision? Well, you know. We just needed jobs. You know, a number of us were working for the uh, Alberta Native Communication Society. They lost their funding. Uh, we were in that funny situation where we couldn't apply for unemployment because technically we were still employed. They just went under into receivership. And so we had to survive. And, and, and for me, it was, we needed jobs. You know, a lot of the workers at, at ANCS, uh, we needed to... Uh, to get back to work. And uh, so that was when we first set up ANCS. Uh, Jeff Bear was with us at the time and he worked on the original um, um, proposals that got uh, CFWE started. Jeff Bear, or I'm sorry, uh, Ray Fox was another key person in our in our growth and he managed our radio station when we first started out at Lac La uh, You know, these are very important people in our history that we need to uh, we need to remember and acknowledge that the parts that they played in in making uh, CFWE and making AMPS uh, what it's becoming today. You know, with the introduction of Radio Bingo, you know, people always chuckle when I say, "Well, we have Radio Bingo," but you know, that's been the the major reason we've been able to afford a lot of our growth is uh, all of the money that comes from Radio Bingo goes towards distribution. And uh, we, like I said, we're still finalizing CJWE in Calgary. We've got an appeal from another group that, that applied and they'll be dealing with that in a couple of weeks. And once that's finalized, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead with Calgary and hopefully uh, we'll have two parties in a month, one for Grand Prairie and the other one for when we launch the Calgary Signal. I mean, we have the new feeds right now, uh, Calgary and, and Grand Prairie as well. Are you happy where we are right now? Where do you want to take the station next? I'm never happy where we're at. <laughs> you know, um, I, I think I was in an earlier interview, I said, you know, you're either growing or you're dying, right? So you are you can't stay in one place. So I believe in keep keeping going, keeping um uh, looking beyond the horizon in 1990 when the federal government cut funding to our newspapers uh, nine out of 11 newspapers ceased publishing mm -hmm. we had six weeks notice to become self-sufficient and I had just taken a uh, motivational uh, course 
by uh, Dr. Dennis Waitley called Psychology Winning. And he would say when something bad happens, you know, what's the opportunity? What's the lesson learned? And so we're sitting here kind of saying, okay, now what, you know? And uh, and we realized that there was a void across Canada in in uh, newspapers. And so Windspeaker went national. Windspeaker filled that void. And, you know, Windspeaker is still around. It's changed its uh, format. It went from hard copy to online and or to a digital copy to online. It's evolved. You ha- it has to evolve in order to... S- to remain active and to remain uh, current, and uh, uh, with radio, the same thing's been happening. You know, we've got apps. We're online. We've got two digital radio stations: the Raven and Buffalo Spirit. And so, we're keeping up with the Joneses, or you know, with keeping up with the times. And it's just we have to keep looking at what technology is is happening down the road and. We make uh, our decisions based on what's coming up and what we need to do. Um, so there's always always opportunity, and uh, you know, like I said, I enjoy the challenge. I, you know, one of the things that I was told when I was taking my management classes is to surround yourself with good people and then get out of their way. And you know, that's basically what I've done. Is you know, I've had some awesome people working for us over the years, and I'd like to thank all of them for getting us to this point in time. Mm.